Welcome back, Danger fans. Today is our follow-up episode to the first show we did down at the Crappy Fishing Bonanza. I wanted to give you a brief history of my boating progression. One of the most important things for me when I first started out fishing was getting off the bank. Once I left the shore, I was able to cover a lot more ground, get a lot more fish, and it took my fishing to the next level. This is how I did it. First of all, I started out with a float tube. Back in the early 80s, float tubes came along. People started using them for trout fishing, uh, stream fishing, but then people started using them for bass fishing. I got one, I went to a lake, I got in, I had my flippers. I flippered around and I caught a lot more fish. That was fantastic. However, it had some drawbacks. Float tube, will it float? Yes. Will it sink? Yes. You have to be prepared in a float tube. You have to have a second flotation device. Wear your life jacket. Once that inner tube goes down, you're out in the middle of the lake, it's all you. Now, it's a lot more difficult to get around in a float tube because you're using your flippers and you are constantly moving and uh, working out. If you've got a bad back, that's not the way to go. <clears throat> After I left the float tube, I came up and found uh, kayaking. Kayaking was big in the scene in the early 2000s. Uh, fishing kayak was coming along. I got this kayak right here for a couple of hundred dollars and it was great. The problem was my friend likes to stay in the kayak eight hours a day and that seat was killing me. So I progressed up to a sit on top. Now this sit on top right here is super comfortable for the seat. However, uh, it doesn't track very well because it has a flat bottom. When you're out there and the wind hits you, you're going for a ride. If you have to paddle upstream, good luck. Get ready to get some exercise. So this was my boating progression. <clears throat> I didn't have a ton of money when I was coming along, and so I had to get the most bang for my buck. This is how I did it. Now I was telling you in my first show that a couple of years ago, I needed some new places to go fishing. And I didn't know a lot of people. I wasn't well connected. Uh, however, I really wanted to go badly. I was riding down the road one day and I see a real estate sign from a guy that I know is the agent. So I gave him a call and I asked him if the property that he had had a lake on it. He said that it did not. However, his brother-in-law had a nice farm pond at his house and that he would give him a call and let me come out there and go fishing. He did that and I'll show you some of the footage from that trip and that worked out so well that I started calling other real estate agents. I called Carolyn Poole. She got me hooked up on the crappy fishing bonanza. I called Mark Arnold. He got me hooked up in a killer pond out in Hull. I talked to my friend Mitchell Pike. He became one of the Danger Fish crew and we go out to a place out in Carlton and fish for big bass out there. I'm going to show you the footage from all of those trips and how easy it is just to give a guy a call up on the phone, ask them, hey, do you have any fishing land? Do you have any clients that have farm ponds? Would they allow me to come out and fish at their place? If you are nice, you are respectful, you follow the rules, then the chances of you getting to come out there are really good. So use that technique and see how it works out for you and watch the footage of how it worked out for me. Have a good day. This is the third lake that I got permission to fish on after I called real estate agents looking for places to go fishing. So I'm here today in an incredibly beautiful lake. It is a little breezy here. So that kayak is going to get blown around a little bit. But this is when he said I could come and so this is when I'm here. Stay with me. What's up internet? Welcome back to the Danger Fish. Today is our second episode and first of all we want to dedicate this episode to all the medical professionals out there battling COVID-19. They're risking their lives and their families' lives to save our butts and we really appreciate everything that they do. Now this is one of the follow-up episodes to how I got onto this lake. get 
something to bite. First cast of the day. Is there anybody out there? There he is. Ooh, that was a good tug. He didn't stay on it. Let's see if we can go get him again. There he is. First fish of the day. What are you? What are you? Uh, a bass. Nice one. I have a lot of rigs here today, but I'm using my favorite, the Abomatic 270 that I got when I was 14 years old. Boom, move out of here, B. Come on now. Swedish made, it is built to last. My Uncle Marvin gave it to me. I call it the Marvomatic. I've caught a million fish with this reel. It specializes in anything under three pounds, which is usually the size of fishes that I catch is under three pounds. Trout, brim, crappy, bass. I use a rooster tail because it'll pretty much find any fish uh, swimming in the lake. I'm not trying to catch 10 pound bass. I'm trying to catch as many fish as I can to make my experience worthwhile for all the effort that you have to put in to get it. And there he is. That's a good feeling. That is a nice fatty bluegill. That's a handful. Big hit here last time. Ooh, and there he is again. I told you. Mr. Brim. Let me see what you look like. Oh, oh, it's a big bass. Oh, it's a good one. Look at that boy right there, kids. Woo. Bit of a two pounder. I knew something had to be underneath that that bush. Knew you had to be there. Come on, boy. Let's see what you are. You've got all the makings of a brim. You are. Somebody would eat that dude all day long. It just won't be me.
That is a fatty. Boom. Boom, there he is right there. Oh, yeah. Boom. Oh, yeah. He's coming up. Oh, nice fat brim. You look at you. All right. There's a big old fatty. Go be fat another day. Kicked it out. Fantastic brim. Look how bad that dude is. You on him? He is not too shabby. Well, let's find out exactly how shabby he is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you three pounds on that one. Got my heart going. You want one of these frogs? Uh, I bet you I got. Oh, I got one of those frogs. Wait a minute, don't don't let go. All right. I didn't have him. Where are you going to put him at? Uh, he ain't got no good spot. You got a gill? Not huge, but they're bass.
not too bad but we don't want to run into the bushes he's turning the boat around see that getting some slack in the line which is illegal Getting better every time. Oh. There's number one. Oh, look at that. Get them on up here. Oh, whoa, look at that bluegill. Look at this, Diera. That is huge. Only if you want him. Wait, wait till you get this on a fly rod. That is the monster. Oh! Just a little fella. There he is. little but it's bass he's on it yeah oh look Diera Look at that. The old bucket mouth. Big old fatty. after it. He's a little guy. Yes, sir. Go back. Boom. The bass. Holy crap, Diera. <laughs> Glad you saw that. There he is. First fish of 
fish of the day. Mr. Bass. cast, but that fish didn't know it was a bad cast. Boom! Look, Marv. You'd be so proud of me right now. Huh. Fish number two. Fish number three. Coming up. Come up, come up, come up. You'll see it. Oh, catch and release. Turned. Come up for us. Oh, look at the bluegill. He decided to join us today. Oh! Oh, you got one. Wow, that's bad. Break out for you. Just a little fella. Oh, he's tugging. Tugging hard. To go fatty. in the water. He said, I'll have some of that. <laughs> Come up again. <laughs> He's on it. Yeah. Oh, look, Diera. Coming on up. Holy. There he is. Bluegill, you are kicking it.
you. I want you. Welcome back, Danger fans. Thanks for watching today's show. I look forward to seeing you again. Join me on my next episodes. I have a very special guest joining us at the Crappy Fishing Bonanza. He's going to let us know why we can't call it a farm pond anymore. See you then.